Hi everyone, this is Oksana and we're going to be making this pendant here, this little oval pendant. And in a previous video I did where I made a little dangly uh, rectangular pendant, um, somebody suggested mirroring the bottom. So the way I did the bottom here, instead of a little crisscross, to do like if it could be done the same way like this. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if it can be done the same way. And I thought it would look especially good on an oval. I haven't wrapped an oval yet in this kind of design. I did a marquee shape. I did obviously a rectangle that I just showed you. I even did a circular round shape. But I thought that this would look good on an oval. And so that's what I did here. So the bottom and the top has a similar design here and then um, just to you know make this different from my previous videos I did kind of a different looking bail here if you happen to like that if not you can do the same bail as the other um, videos that I've done on this similar design so that's it if you want to see how to make this little oval pendant then just keep watching so my stone is an oval shape and it's a little more than an inch. It's a, about an inch and a quarter, just the tiniest bit less than an inch and a quarter, about 30, um, 30 millimeters there. And it's a labradorite. And then I'm using a piece of 20 gauge square dead soft copper wire. You don't have to use copper, you can use silver. And you don't have to use square either. You can use round. Um, it's ten and a half inches. And um, I get my wire from Rio Grande. I get people um, asking me a lot where I get my wire from. But I realize that Rio Grande, I think, is wholesale only. Um, so you might have to register. I'm just gently, gently bending this in half to find the middle. Um, so I think for people just starting out looking for square and half round wire, you can probably find some on Etsy and eBay because I know people buy in bulk, which is how Rio sells, and then they resell in smaller quantities. So if you just need a small quantity because maybe you're new, you're just trying it out, um, I would recommend checking out Etsy or eBay. So once you've located where the middle portion of your wire will be. You want to take something round-ish, like a pencil. If you don't have bail making pliers, um, you can use round nose pliers. And you just want to make, I'm going to use this um, size here, you just want to make a little circle. So this part is pretty similar to the previous video. It's going to start to get different kind of towards the end. So once you've made yourself this little circle, it's up to you whether you want to hammer it. But I am going to hammer it um, off camera so it's not too loud. And to hammer it, I'm going to be using an iron block. And I'm going to place it down on the iron block and I have a chasing hammer. And first I'm going to use the flat side, just on this little circular part up top here. Um, and then once that's looking a little flat from me hammering it, um, with the flat side I'm going to use the round side and that's going to give it some nice texture. That is of course optional. And now I'm going to take some half round wire. So here is that little top portion after it's been hammered. You can see the texture. It'll really come out if you decide to oxidize the copper. Um, so some half round 22 gauge wire. You don't need to measure a piece, just keep it on the spool as you use it. And I'm just going to start out by grabbing this little tail end. The flat side is down, the rounded side is up. And I am just guiding the half round wire with my hand as I'm twisting the piece. After you've done that for a little bit, you just want to cut this little tail end so it's at the front. 
where you have the texture because that's going to get covered up by the stone. Whereas if you put it on the other side, on the back, that won't get covered up. Then you'll have a little wire end there that can get caught on things. So now we want to take our stone. So our stone is going to go like this. So if I do, um, I mark my stones with, <laughs> with a little marker, which side is the top, because it gives the best kind of color versus if I hold it this way, you have to like really tilt it to see the color. So anyway, so if it goes like this, you are going to wrap this all the way down plus a little extra. So your choices are to keep going exactly as we have been here, or you can make larger wraps. You can space them out like this where you have big spaces in between. I think it's a pretty interesting look, but if you don't like it, then of course you can keep it nice and tight just like at the top there. So what you want to do is once you start to get to the bottom like I have here, you want to go ahead and you want to change this now back to the tight little wrap where they're just right next to each other like this. And we're going to do that for just a little bit because it has to bend from back to front of the stone. This portion is going to be visible on the front of your stone, or at least the top of this portion is going to be on the bottom and then the front. So I'm just going to grab my stone and I'm gonna see how that is looking. All right, so it sticks out a teeny bit here. So if you imagine that bending, it's gonna bend and then the little wrap that we've done is probably gonna end here because it's just a little bit there. We want it to go higher, like right there. So that means I just need to do this for a tiny bit longer. Whoops, I got a little bit twisted there. The tricky thing about half round wire is it can get a little twisted and then you can have the flat side up instead of the rounded side up. So you just have to be careful about that. That's why I prefer to twist. It's easier to kind of guide it with this hand so that it lays down properly with the flat side down. All right, so I think that should be enough. So the way that you want to cut this is so the little wire end is the same as your other wire end. It's here on this side, the side with the hammered texture, the front, the part that you're going to see from the front. Because when this gets bent over, it's going to be bent onto the stone and you will not be seeing the little wire end. So now, if I hold this up against my stone and I have most of the round portion sticking up, just really this bottom hidden, and then I take this and I bend it around and onto the front exactly as we want it. Just a little bit here of this wrap which allows us to open these up like this. And that's going to hold our stone. I'm just trying to get it nice and equal and even. You could twist the wire now for a little extra effect. 
So once it is even, make sure you hold it nice and centered. I'm going to press down on it with my thumb here so it does not move and it stays centered and I'm just carefully bending these wires from front to back and then here on the back I'm bringing them up. Wow, I thought that this piece of wire was really long and I was gonna have like extra little bits um, at the end but look at that, we barely have any wire left at all. I mean this will be enough but it's like barely enough. Now I'm just bending them again onto the front so um, if you have a bigger stone than mine definitely want to cut yourself a longer piece of wire. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place these wires down on our stone. We're gonna give them a careful little bend because we are trying to mirror this bottom portion here. So we want them to be the same. All right. Then we're going to lift them up a little bit from our stone. We're going to try and kind of bring them together if you can. And then we're going to grab our half round wire again. And we're going to wrap. So I'm just pinching down that wire end. I'll get rid of it later. We're going to wrap around the two wires because we're kind of mimicking what we have going on on the bottom there. So it's a similar look. So at this point, I'm just going to trim this wire and this time we want the little wire end to end up on the inside there so you won't be able to see it from the front. So if I kind of lift this up some more, be able to see the wire end in there and then I'm just going to squish that down. Here's what we have so far. So I think, I think we're pretty much done here. This doesn't need to be very long because it's going to go through this little loop there. So what we're going to do is just kind of start making a little curve with it and then just put it through that loop there and then with our pliers here on the other side, we're just going to gently bend it down and check from the front that it's looking okay, which it is. And then we're going to take these little wire ends and we're going to kind of curve them around this circular bit here. And it essentially makes a little loop. I normally would trim the wire, but I think it's that short that I really don't even need to trim it just try to kind of close up that loop so that the wire is kind of in there it's touching itself so that you can't feel the little wire end and then we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side Wow I don't think this has ever happened before where I literally had like 
the perfect amount of wire and I didn't even have to cut my wire at the end. Oh my gosh, I just can't get to that little end there. Come on. There we go. All right, make sure you can't feel that little wire end. I'm just gonna press down on that. Perfect. So here is how that looks. All right, so for the bail portion, you could just put a cord necklace through and do a little lark's knot. You could do any of the bales that I did, little dangle bales um, for this design in previous um, videos of similar designs. I'll link some of my previous videos below where I did this on different um, stone shapes. Or um, I wanted this video to be a little different, so I came up with this funky kind of bail that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to cut myself a six inch piece of the same wire, the 20 gauge wire. I'm going to find the middle of it and I'm going to make a circle that is the same um, size roughly as the one that I made previously. like that. I'm just gonna fix it up. There we go. Make sure that, so because it's square wire, it's got these flat sides. They can get twisted and then you have like an angle of the square instead of the flat side. So I'm just fixing it so I have the flat sides. That's okay that there's like little wire marks, um, little tool marks on it now because it's gonna get covered up. But that's what we want for them to be lined up like this with the flat edges there. And then we're gonna grab our half round wire and we are going to wrap around this for a little bit. So I'm just going to speed through this. So this of course depends on the size of bale that you want. Um, so for me, this should be adequate. And we're going to trim these little wire ends so they're both on the same side. And then we're just going to squish it all down with my squeaky, squeaky pliers. <laughs> I, um, every time I buy new pliers, they just become squeaky in like a matter of days. So I feel like all my pliers squeak. It's not because they're old or worn down. They just all like to squeak. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold right at the end of the circle and you can use your round nose pliers again or your hand to try and kind of give it that nice curve for your bail. But before you close that curve up all the way, um, here's what we're going to do. By the way, the wire ends are in here. They're not on the outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put our other bale on top of it. So we're just sliding it on like this. Alright, now you can continue this curve. And you need to put these little wire ends through here. So I like to guide this with my pliers. I think that makes a much nicer looking little bale there. And then once they're through, we're gonna separate these two little wires here and we're gonna 
bend them one on each side to the back like this so it kind of jiggles a little bit but it won't do that too much once we trim it um, and it's up to you but you can actually wrap this multiple times around so mine is only wrapped around once you can keep going and do it again so I'm just gonna trim these little wire ends I'm gonna trim them short because when I pinch this down when I pinch these little loops that have been created closed I don't want them to go all the way and see the wire end in the front so before I press that down here on the back I just want to make sure it's centered because it does move from side to side right now and then I'm gonna take those little wire ends and I'm just gonna squish them down and see because they're so short they don't reach all the way around so you will not be able to see them from the front I'm just squishing this one down and once you've pressed them down um, this no longer moves so here's what it looks like from the back and if you like this if you like the way that the circle looks you could have done that um, in the front maybe the circle would be kind of laying here on top I'm not sure but I think that would be another cool look to do it the other way around so you have lots of different options here with the bale but let me just put a cord through there so I can show you the final piece here so here's what we ended up with kind of a I think like a funky modern or kind of futuristic looking pendant there so that's it and you of course can just do a different kind of bale just a little dangle bale like I did in my other videos if you don't like the look of this but that is it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye